Question is the Assembly do now adjourn. Ms Chang. Mr Speaker, and um, just with the Assembly's indulgence, I'd just be grateful for um, the usual half the time extension, as I think I will go a little bit over that five minutes. When we get to the five minutes, you can seek a half extension. Okay. Um, Madam Speaker, it is a privilege tonight to rise to mark and celebrate uh, the life of a proud and passionate Canberran who embodied what it means to serve your community, Graham Evans. Graham was born in 1938 and grew up in Elwood. He and his young family first moved to Canberra in 1968 for two years, where they lived in the outskirts of Canberra also known as the newly established suburb of Aranda. In the early 1970s, he and his family returned to Melbourne and he turned to politics for about the next decade, serving on the Sandringham Council, including a term as mayor. In 1981, Graham and his family returned to Canberra, where his day job remained in the public service, but in his spare time, Graham became heavily involved in a significant number of community organisations across the ACT, across so many of which he leaves an indelible legacy. These include the ACT Council of Social Services, YHA New South Wales and ACT, Friends of the Grasslands, the PC User Association, the IATSIS Research Ethics Committee, the Bushfire Council, the Conservation Council of the ACT region, the Alcohol and Drug Foundation of the ACT, the Council of Cultural and Community Organisations and the Nature and Society Forum. Madam Speaker, these many organisations alone give quite a clear impression of the breadth of Graham's interests and involvement, as well as how giving he was of his time and his expertise. However, those are just the beginnings of an insight into Graham's contributions to this city it's an understatement to say that Graham was enthusiastic about public education. He served on the boards of Canberra High School, Hawker College and Lake Ginninderra College, as well as the PNC Association, the latter of which he was a devoted member for over 25 years and a life member. He wrote school board constitutions, he had quite a knack for them, and many are still used today. He protested school closures and even got arrested for one. Charges were later dropped. And he lobbied for the re-establishment of Birigai Education Camp after the 2003 fires. But Madam Speaker, it's Graham's contributions to the broader Belconnen community, which may be his greatest legacy. Graham saw something special in the region worth protecting and worth enhancing. He had significant vision for how Belconnen should look and how it should feel, with a particular insistence on ensuring there were plenty of formal and informal spaces, man-made and natural, for people to come together as a community. While Graham was not the inaugural president of the Belconnen Community Council, he was present and active from its very beginnings, and did later serve as president for many, many years. He was steadfast in his desire to hold the ACT government accountable to its promises in Belconnen, ensuring the construction of an indoor pool in Belconnen, which we now know as SISAC, and of course the Belconnen Arts Centre. He was particularly pleased with how Lake Ginninderra increasingly emerged as a hub of local activity and recreation. Graham encouraged modest development in the town centre, but never at the expense of access to the lake or encroaching on its green space, particularly along the north and western shores. He argued for town centre development being tiered back away from the lake, and it is. While some people seek power and to be the centre of attention, Graham was not one of them. His support for civic participation was genuine and he encouraged regular renewal on the BCC committee especially in the executive positions. I and others were a direct beneficiary of his support and of his encouragement. After his years as president, he continued on as an active committee member for as long as he possibly could. He could always be counted on to attend, and his well-considered input and cooperative approach were greatly valued. 
As President, I always appreciated his wise counsel. May I please seek the extension? Is leave granted? Yes. Leave is granted, Ms Jane. Thank you. Graham was a fixture in the town centre and supported local restaurants, often with a book in hand for company. He was a life member of the Belcon and Labor Club. In fact, it was so much like a second home to him that when we were finalising the BCC's submission on the Belconnen Town Centre Master Plan in 2015 and wanted Graham's input, he asked me to print the submission in hard copy and for it to be delivered, not to his home, but to the reception desk at the Labor Club. Not surprisingly, a key feature of our submission and ultimately the Master Plan is the protection of green space around the lake. Soon after, Graham began to withdraw from community service with his decades-long impeccable attendance disrupted. Long after he withdrew completely, his absence was and remains very apparent. Graham died on 18 February this year. My thanks to Kim Fisher, Stephen Bounds, Robin Coughlin, Brian Reinhardt, Charles Thomas, Damien Huss, Matt Watts, Glenn Hyde, and especially Graham's daughter Jody, who in the last few weeks and months have shared with me some of the pieces of who Graham was, who he was to them, and the legacy he leaves in helping me prepare this speech. I don't think, Madam Speaker, that we will ever quite know for sure just how vast Graham's reach and influence was. But I hope today I have given a picture of someone to whom we as a community in Belconnen know so much. He is very greatly missed, and I extend my deepest condolences to his family and to his friends. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Chan.